dear viewers uh, welcome you once again on today's live show organized by prominent consultant uh, the colleges in canada uh, sometimes you are worried that whether you should apply to a college sometimes you are feeling upset that if we apply to a college in canada so maybe uh, it won't be a wise decision uh, see uh, <clears throat> Before starting our main topics with North Island College, I would like to say something about the college system in Canada. They have divided the education system in two ways. Okay, one is research-based, another one is, co I mean, uh, the skill-based. Okay, the industry they know they don't need the re researcher. They only need the people who know the things, who have the skills, who are ready for the job. The industry actually needs those people. So colleges in Canada have been established for this purpose. So students can finish their degree in a short time and within an affordable budget, and they can finish it off very quickly and they can do their start their job in the industry very soon. Because Canada, there are a lot of job openings every year. The, the number of jobs are increasing. So they need people, they need people to the industry. So they are looking for some skilled people, those who can get hands-on experience, experiential learning they have, and they who have the practical experience so that they can easily execute themselves in those industries. So that's how the college stands for. And it's also that colleges, uh, their admission requirement, IELTS requirement is quite flexible than university. The, pro the programs are completely practical based. So it's not like that you need to take a huge pressure of study. And um, because sometimes we can see that in, students are going to a university because they are thinking that oh, why should I, I go to a uh, college instead of university because I have completed class 12. So why should I go to a college? Because college is, we already have started class 12 in a college, but it's not a college of, un, I mean, below undergrad. It's a college of post-secondary education and postgraduate courses. So definitely college in Canada, colleges, they run the post-secondary program, which is after class 12 and after bachelor. And these colleges are actually built for only for the training programs, the professional program, so the students can get the complete professional skills and they can utilize themselves in the industry very quickly. And as as you know that the colleges students are also getting PSW post study work permit and as well as they are also getting uh, they can also apply for PR as like bachelor and master. So. Some people we are we are getting always that they are they already enrolled in the university and after one semester they are saying oh I'm really feeling very difficult just to follow my classes I cannot pass the exam so then they are coming back to colleges and start the things again so please don't waste your time because time is the most valuable thing in your life don't waste your time uh, and after that you take the decision to admit to take admission in a college better you re research first you talk to us talk to the colleges what are the opportunities you can get what are the things you can get and you just design your life according to your background don't follow others okay don't follow some some friends that okay he went to university of manitoba so i have to go to manitoba it's not like that you have to think you have to design your goal your career path through your uh, academic background or in your financial capacity suppose if you would like to study in a university you have to spend for four years right you have to spend your money for four years you need to invest for four years but in a college you need to spend for two years so you need to check your financial capacity then you need to uh, take your decision according to your capacity so don't take your decision honestly speaking emotionally and don't take any uh, uh, decision uh, influenced uh, which is uh, referred by your friends or uh, some someone from your relatives or any anyone so take your decision in your way in your way not others way that's how my concern is colleges is always a good platform those who are really wants to make themselves skilled because colleges most programs are on uh, uh, hands-on experience program so uh, dear viewers i have i have told a lot, lot of things about colleges definitely we'll, we'll talk about everything with north island college today we have uh, in our live session one of our partner college which is a public college based in british columbia very fantastic college very reputed college which is north island college and today junko is with us who is the international recruitment uh, officer uh, from north island college and visited dhaka last time we had a very wonderful time with him in last global education expo so junko welcome you Thank you In so much, time. Sayed. Um, I'm yes. really happy to be here. So how was my introduction? 
It was fantastic. Yes, you definitely did talk a lot about, um, you know, the um, the benefits of attending colleges. Exactly, exactly. Actually, mm -hmm. colleges, um, colleges are something like that. They should understand actually what the college stands for. So, mm -hmm. first of all, how are you? I'm really well. Um, we are. Um, we're enjoying the weather actually right now. Um, it's starting yeah. to warm up. Very sunny weather. Mm -hmm. how's the how's the temperature over there at this moment oh right now it's not that high it's probably about 20 degrees but some wow. of the days we're starting to get 26 um sometimes almost 28 so really? yeah it's 20 degree high. to 25 it's like moderate and it's like very comfortable weather yeah i mean not so cold not so hot yeah medium weather and really it's a fantastic weather to live Mm -hmm. So Junko, actually, we'll talk about everything about colleges, Canada, why not Ireland, why it is where it is located, mm -hmm. everything. Everything we'll discuss with you definitely. And people are watching. Uh, people good. will uh, be you know that they will be uh, looking uh, forward to know everything. So uh, before that, I would like to request all our viewers, all our students, please uh, share this live video in your timeline. So who are interested for Canada, they can be benefited through this live video, and it will be one hour session for you and if you have any question any particular question for any program or for any kind of things tuition fees and everything you just feel free to ask we'll try to give you the perfect answer and when you are asking any question please uh, mention your academic details your um uh, your ilts score so that it will be uh, it will be help, it will help us to, uh, to give you the right answer so junko before going to the main discussion so we'll have a video of north island college let's have the video first because this video are uh, explaining that how North Island College is and why people are choosing Canada, why international students are preferring Canada for the higher studies, because Canada is a very safe, safest country. Mm -hmm. It's the safest country in the world and people are enjoying a comfortable life over there. So let's have the video first, okay? Sounds great, thank you. I decided to come to Canada because I just loved Canada. Uh, I was choosing between America and Canada, but people used to say that the crime rates in America are really high, and I wanted a safe place to study outside of home, and it was affordable too. My experience in Canada has been really great. Like I've, I live in a homestay, and I love the people I live with. They're very helpful, and when I came, they just helped me to open my bank account, get me a phone and like get me settled before even school began. I think the most important thing I find enjoyable is the people. Because since I was raised in Mumbai, which is a huge metropolitan city, I'm kind of a city boy. So coming over here to a more a community based, it was really interesting. And I liked the change. It was a good change for me. Uh, the education's been really good. The professors are really nice. In terms of the classroom, it's really enhanced our diversity. And so we, we're bringing students from around the world into our classrooms. And the benefactor of that is not only the international students, but also our domestic students who have a broader perspective on global business uh, issues than they've ever had before. The world has gotten small with technology and the ease of travel. And we talk about business on a global perspective. Now the students actually get to live it. Students can't really go wrong. They start with us in programs like humanities and social sciences, sciences, engineering, business. We have access for students where, who can start with us, finish at one of the top universities in Canada, guaranteed. You have access to you know, at nature right at your doorstep. There's Mount Washington is just around the corner, really. It's like a 20, 30 minute drive. You can go skiing, snowboarding. We're right along the ocean, along the coast. There's rivers to swim in, there's lakes to swim in. There's just so much that you can do outdoors. It's really uh, amazing. <laughs> Yes, people are loving Canada. That's why they are coming to Canada for their higher studies, because they can study, they can work, and after uh, after that they can apply for PR and they can easily get the passport of Canada. 
so i think uh, canada is such a country right so junko i mean uh, we would like to know from you that why people should consider canada Yes, um, a lot of people consider Canada, number one, definitely, I think is safety. Um, you don't have to worry about being any involved in any kind of um, um, crimes, um, especially um, in our region, the safety is, um, the, the level of safety is quite high in Comox Valley in comparison to many other cities across the province or, or across Canada. Um, so safety is definitely number one, especially for female students, it tends to be that way. Um, and then I think the second thing is that the scenery and the environment is completely different from students coming from Bangladesh um, or any other parts of the world. And so they choose Canada so that they can explore and um, experience a completely different life for themselves. Okay. So uh, definitely, and also something we need to add that Canada always uh, English speaking country, they are English speaking country, and if there is no language barrier, actually people can uh, they can easily explore themselves in English, they can talk in English, they can study in English, and it's a very large country, second yes. largest country in the world, yep. and uh, they are offering very good programs which are practical based learning, and people can easily make them skillful, and the return of investment to uh, to a Canadian education it's completely 100 percent returnable so it is completely uh, uh, uh you know that the people who are investing money to the canadian education so it's completely 100 uh, percent returnable I, I would say more than 100 percent yeah so, exactly so in canada there are 10 provinces we know that uh, british columbia is out of them so uh, british columbia is not out of them sorry amongst among of those 10 provinces so uh, could you please tell something about the special features of British Columbia province and why people can consider British Columbia as their study destination? Mm -hmm. um, I would um, point out a couple of things. Number one is that British Columbia um, is on the west side of Canada and in terms of the climate it's much more temperate in comparison to other parts of Canada where it can be quite cold during the winter time. I myself have um, lived in a very very cold place in Canada in the past and uh, I must say that the you know, sometimes when it's really sunny and warm I go outside and think oh I am on holiday no, I'm not, you know, so um, definitely makes the living so much easier. Um, the second thing is that in British Columbia, in, um, amongst all the colleges and universities, we have an agreement to recognize each other's courses. So basically, when you take a course at a college, um, it's already recognized at a university so that it's easier to go back and forth between different colleges or from college to university and the curriculum the level of instruction they are all um, guaranteed because all of the college and university instructors they meet um, annually once a year usually around this time or a little bit earlier to ensure that all of their curriculum and the quality of instruction is ensured so um, without worrying about you know um, the, the level of instruction um, you can comfortably choose both colleges and universities as your educational choice for the future. Okay, but people want to know about the opportunities in British Columbia, like that mm -hmm. if uh, people are coming, going from South Asia and mm -hmm. uh, especially from Asian countries, they always look for some working opportunities after graduation, the, uh, the you know, the job opportunities, What how yes. the British Columbia is in that part. Yeah, so when it comes to employment, there are a few things to point out. Um, the first thing is that if you think about the geography of North America, we're actually quite close to California, Silicon Valley, that area. And with uh, that area expanding and not quite having enough um, to expand any further, a lot of the industries from that area is actually moving up into Vancouver area and um, beyond. Yeah, so. Um, we have, uh, not just in our city, but um, all over British Columbia, there are many companies that have moved in from the US, um, which is uh, startup companies or IT companies, any kind of businesses that are um, um, thriving really, really well in Canada. And they are expanding and creating a lot of um, employment opportunities. And also there's a lot of international um, international business opportunities as well. Um, because our area in British Columbia are very, very multicultural. 
a lot of people bring in, um, you know, their businesses from overseas or um, were expand towards the, um, the areas that um, um, people originally came from. Exactly. And one more thing that we know that every year uh, there are a lot of job openings in uh, British Columbia itself. And uh, uh, there are new scopes uh, after graduation. People are getting new scopes to uh, to get the opportunity to there are a lot of job openings in British Columbia that we know. And really, truly, uh, British Columbia, dear students, I'd like to say that uh, British Columbia could be one of your best starting destinations because of opportunity. Because Vancouver is one of the biggest city. Uh, it's the third uh, most livable city in the world. And there are a lot of, lot of uh, foreign companies and there are a lot of job opportunities in uh, Vancouver. And not only that, in other parts of British Columbia. So Junko, actually, mm, uh, as I told before, uh, before starting, I mean, uh, I mean uh, at the beginning of my discussion about the difference between college and university. So people, you know that uh, when they are talking, when we are talking about the college, uh, they are sometimes they are feeling uncomfortable. They are feeling that why college, uh, why I should choose a college, right, instead of uh, mm -hmm. choosing a university. So I mean, could you please explain about this matter, college and university? Why? Mm -hmm. Uh, people can consider in which circumstances they can consider college for their study okay yeah definitely so um as i mentioned before um colleges offer the same quality of education as universities so in that sense there is really no need for you to worry about um, the second thing in British Columbia is that it's really easy to transfer to many of the universities within British Columbia or even outside of British Columbia. So the transfer to university is very, very seamless. The third thing is definitely the cost. Um, you can be quite cost sensitive by starting at a college um, because you, in terms of the tuition and other fees, you're looking at paying at least $10,000 or even um, more um, um, I guess less than um, what you would pay at a university. So if you think about coming to a college um, for the first two years and then finishing the last two years of the degree program at a university, you can imagine how much money you can actually save. Um, and then the next thing is um, when you um, take classes at a college, you're looking at being in the classroom of anywhere between about 12 students to about 30 students depending on the, um, the structure of the class. Um, in comparison to universities, some of the universities, you will be in a class um, with about 500, sometimes over a thousand students. So you, it, the learning is completely on you to take care of. You know, there is a lot of independence that's required. Um, there is a lot less academic support that's available. Um, whereas by um, learning in a college, you have one-on-one -on -one time with your instructor. You can actually ask a lot of questions and request support. And also through um, most of the colleges would have something called a learning commons or um, study support where you can go and then bring your material in and then ask for some further um, instruction and support. And so for students that are thinking, oh, I don't know if I would be successful by just being on my own, um, and learning, then starting with a college is really a good idea. And then the last yeah. thing that I would like to mention also is that <clears throat> universities have much higher academic requirement when it comes to admission, um, whereas colleges would have a slightly lower requirement simply because we believe in um, providing pathways for students so that they can be academically successful. So students can come into the college, take their courses in a smaller, more intimate environment, be academically successful, and when they are ready after one or two years, transfer over to university and start going into much bigger classes. Exactly. So I just I just want to give an example of a student who lives in Canada, uh, who started in Douglas College, has completed uh, the associate degree from Douglas College. And I was asking her that, how did you feel in a college? So he, she told me that he is fantastic because I have completed my two years uh, in 
uh, Douglas College and where the class size is only uh, 30 people or 25 people and uh, I was very I was very comfortable uh, to do the classes and the uh, college is also very fantastic and after that uh, maybe she is going to apply to SFU Simon, Simon Fraser University so the colleges is a platform that where students can get easily uh, they can do it, the enrollment very easily and the requirements are low because uh, suppose you i know that uh, nic nic has a program of university transfer program where students can spend one year two years in a college and they can transfer their credits 100 percent uh, credits to the top ranked universities in canada like sfu U university of victoria or university of british columbia or some other universities also so the thing is that if we compare with the university figure if you compare with the university fees like UBC or Simon Fraser their fees is above 35,000 Canadian dollar per year but in uh, NIC they are spending only 15,000 or 30 sorry 13,000 NIC fees only 13,000 which is very affordable so within the amount of one third within the amount of one third they are finishing the course in North Island College so that is the benefit and they can easily get chance to colleges without any doubts so that's the beauty of the college. So uh, Junko will have a video of your university transfer program, mm -hmm. how it works. OK. Yes. Thank you. Let's have the video first. Students coming to NIC really have the ability to devise a transfer plan that can take them anywhere. We have students starting here for a general Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or any number of professional programs. So if you work closely with our advisors and the advisors at your receiving institution, really the possibilities are endless. It was definitely worth it to come here. It gave me the opportunity to really enjoy school rather than be pressured to to really focus on grades and try to maintain a social life and I could just come home, put my feet up and everything would be okay. NIC does have dozens of agreements that make it easier for our students to attend university. For example, you can secure your seat at UVic and NIC from high school while you get access to financial awards at both institutions, or you can guarantee your admission to UVic with your grades at NIC. Plus, you can study at NIC and Vancouver Island University at the same time with BIU dual admission. Our most recent agreement is with the University of Manitoba, providing our military students academic credit for their rank, as well as some specialized support on their way to their degree. I would absolutely recommend any student to go to the dual admission program just because it really takes a lot off of your shoulders. Instead of having to worry about paperwork, North Island College really does that for you. They try to keep you on track and try to figure out you know, what it is you're looking for and helping you out. And if you need to ask a question, they're, they're most certainly there to, to answer it for you. So they make it as uh, streamlined as possible. You have a lot of options in your study plan and so you have the ability to take courses from a wide range of subject matter. So you can take some sciences, you can take some social sciences, so you may have the opportunity to explore some subject areas that you've never studied before, such as anthropology or philosophy, psychology, sociology. By going to NIC, I was able to figure out what I wanted to do before spending the big dollars on kind of just soul searching. So but let me take a step back from that big push to go to university to, to really figure out what I enjoy, to really figure out what I would dedicate myself to for the rest of my schooling. See, uh, it's, it's a very good university about, uh, about uh, a very good video, especially for uh, UTP courses. So I would like to explain something uh, to the viewers about how does it work. Actually, in North Island College, there are two kind of university program, university transfer program. One is associate degree, two years. Um, another one is UTP, university transfer program. So from UTP, you can transfer your credits after one year to any, any British Columbia University, the top ranked universities in BC or Apart from BC, also you can apply to uh, University of Manitoba and other things. What, what is the difference? Suppose 
you are dreaming to study in university of victoria or university of manitoba or university of simon or simon fraser university or ubc maybe but they are asking more than 90 percentage of marks in your class 12 and their fees is extremely high so sometimes you suppose your percentage is low like 60 percent you have average but you have a dream to go to those universities this dream can be fulfilled definitely you can finish your finish your two years degree in north island uh, where you are finishing a two years degree in within a 26000 canadian dollar it will cost in U university of victoria around 70000 canadian dollar so you can imagine how much you have to pay to those universities and because and also because of your percentage you are not going to be accepted by them so for you university transfer program or associate degree could be a, the best option and associate degree you have a fantastic option once you finish the associate degree after two years and if you feel that oh i don't have any budget to uh, to uh, go for the next two years then you can go for the work permit after associate degree you will get three years of work permit and after getting PR, also you can continue your bachelor. So this is a very, very flexible way, very comfortable way if you are not eligible for the university directly. So, so I would like to request you research properly, research properly the things and take the decision. There are a lot of ways to move out, to move in. So it's not like that you have to be stick on in a particular thing. There, there are so many ways to move on. Uh, to the university so this is a very fantastic way and uh junko we have a lot of students who are starting in their in uh, british columbia associate degree utp and they're transferring their credits to those public uh, to those uh, top ranked universities very easily so junko now we'd like to know about especially about nic about nic because there are a few colleges in british columbia so why nic why they should choose nic and why where it is located and uh, how far it is uh, from uh, British Columbia, sorry, uh, from Vancouver. So, so far I know that NIC is in Vancouver Island, right? It is located yes. in Vancouver Island. So mm -hmm. people are thinking that, oh, I need to start in an island. Maybe it's a small area. Mm -hmm. Would you please explain about all this? Yes, definitely. And um, I would like to also add in terms of uh, studying at the college, when you were talking about um, change, um, Associate of Arts uh, or Science degrees, some students start in Associate of Arts or Science degree program, which is a two year program and then find out that maybe that is not what they're looking for. Maybe um, academic courses are not really their thing. And when they realize that, instead of going say from university or from a totally academic schools um, over to another school, they can stay with us and then shift over to a little bit more practical or more hands-on training so that within the two years, instead of you know um, having to change schools, they can stay with the same school and then finish a different type of a, a diploma program that can lead them into jobs. So we have seen that happen as well um, in many occasions. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, but in terms of North Island College, yes, so we are located on Vancouver Island. Um, from door to door, um, from one airport to the other airport, it's um, about uh, 30 minutes from Vancouver International Airport to the um, airport in our campus area. So it's very, very close. We just basically go up in the air and then we go back down. So, um, so it's a really short flight. We also have a ferry that goes across the water um, and um, it's about an hour and a half on the ferry. It's a little bit slower than the, um, the flight for sure. Um, so from but, Vancouver, uh, from Vancouver, you know that there is a ferry system. Mm -hmm. uh, so as there is, uh, they have to cross uh, some portion of the water. So so they can go by drive uh, uh, crossing ferry through ferry. Yes, yes that's how, right. How long it takes? How long it takes? Um, usually from Vancouver, it's about three um, about three hours or so um, from yeah, Vancouver right. if you take the ferry because you would okay. then dock into um, a slightly southern city called Nanaimo and then from there it's another hour drive um, to our main campus which is in Comox Valley. Okay. So, and how, how far from Victoria? Uh, from Victoria, it's about a two hour drive. 
So we, yeah, we have a lot of students that actually pile up in their car together and then go down to Victoria or Vancouver over the, over the weekends just to see their friends or to have fun. Um, they can definitely have fun here, but sometimes the change of scenery is fun too. So, wow. so yeah. how the Comox Valley, how the Comox Valley, the your city? Um, Comox Valley, um, unlike uh, bigger cities like Vancouver or even somewhere in Ontario, we're actually sandwiched between the ocean and mountains. And wow. so, yeah, where really I cool live, view. yeah, it is. And where I live is actually not really um, a special place at all. I act, I have uh, uh, quite a few students that live in the area um, in the rental places. And um, our um, from my house, the beach is five minutes. Um, I can just walk there. And then um, the mountain is actually a national park and also it has a ski hill um, behind us. So it's about 20, 25 minute drive from here. And so there's a lot of access to outdoor, even if you don't play sports, um, if you really need to take a breath and relax, then the beach is really close by. And oftentimes I go to the beach and I see students just you know, sitting around and um, enjoying the view and taking a break. So yeah, it's really nice. And also um, we have in Comox Valley, we have about 75,000 people that um, are residents here right now. And um, it's a smaller city, but because of the that smallness of the city, um, we really embrace um, international students coming in. A lot of the employers around here are really welcoming international students and also um, different types of groups and communities. Um, so you would re really feel at home and be connected with the community, like some of the, the students in the video talked about. Exactly, exactly. And uh, um, so it's a very good, I mean, uh, for the natural beauty and uh, the people are not that, that not much crowded area so people can enjoy. But how is the opportunities for, you know, that the, from South Asia people are will be looking for some part-time jobs on campus or off campus or uh, after that they'll be looking for some job opportunities in in those cities so in that case how is Comox Valley yeah um so part-time employment opportunities are available um pretty much all across um, our campus areas um, we have three main campuses for international students Comox Valley, Campbell River, and also Port Alberni, um, depending on programs. And I, as far as I know, pretty much all the students work part time and they seem to be quite happy with it. Um, and uh, a couple of nice things about being here and working here is that your workplace is actually quite close to your school or where you live. So you don't have to spend hours on end in transportation going from one place to another. And also, employers really like having students. So in the summertime or in your break, if you wanted to work more than 20 hours a week, which you're allowed to do legally, um, then you don't necessarily have to find um, two more part-time jobs to make up for the full-time um, hours. You can actually stay with the same employer if you wanted to, and they oftentimes increase the hours for you so that you can work full time there, which is a really welcome move for students. Exactly. So we'll take a question of one of our students. He has asked a question on live. Uh, Zilan Khan he is asking that is there any PGD course for CSC graduates? And in total, how much does it cost, including living expenses? So do you have okay. any postgraduate programs in uh, computer science or computer related programs? Okay, so we do have students that come with some sort of computer programming or IT background into our post-degree diploma program. We do not have post-degree diploma programs specifically for that, um, but what students have done in the past and have been very, very successful is to go into post-degree diploma in global business management. And in that, you would learn some of the management skills, um, a very basic business um, uh, acumen that you need in order to um, at one day, at one point in time, become a manager and things like that. Um, and also, during, um, in the elective courses, you can take some programming courses, some IT courses, or even digital marketing courses. Um, so you can change um, slightly your program in order to make it more towards your needs. Okay, so so you uh, don't have any specific course on computer, 
my students mm. can uh, choose global business management and inside the course they can choose some major like mm -hmm. it or uh, digital marketing that like that, that's yes. how you are saying yes so that's right here jilan actually they don't have any specific program on it but you can choose global business management where you can choose major as as it or digital marketing because nowadays actually uh, with the it background if you have some management skill or some it uh, then it, it is always better in uh, it will impact positively in your career so you can think about that and if you have still any further query just feel free to uh, contact a prominent consultant will be helping you for your desired program so junko uh, uh, let's have a video uh, of your uh, Comox Valley campus okay we'll see the video and next we'll talk about other things okay sure Just a quick uh, view of your Comox Valley campus. So I, I so, noticed that uh, um, in that video, they actually shot it on the day they had snow. <laughs> yes, we get no. about, yeah, we get about no, three actually, days. Uh, actually, when people are thinking for Canada, they must think about the snow because snow is the beauty of Canada. So they should accept it and they should come. They should go <laughs> to Canada to see the snow, the beauties of snow. So yeah. uh, though the uh, though uh, BC is not uh, BC has not that kind of snow during winter. It's not so extreme. It's a very moderate weather in winter also. But if you want to like uh, if you are, if you like snow more, then you can go to Manitoba or Saskatchewan or some other province. Then you will have more snows, uh, more cold. So uh, okay. So uh, Mr. Z uh, Zilan Khan is asking again after doing global business management course, as you mentioned, will there be available full time job based on these and job values as well? Yes, of course. When uh, you have a technical skill along with the management skill. I don't think so. You should worry about your job prospects. The job will be in your hand. So just go with that. Don't worry about it because yeah. a company always prefers someone who is having both skills, right, Junko? Yes. Uh, IT and, and also management. So they don't need yeah. to hire some other person to uh, to manage their company uh, separately. So if someone is having both skills, so he can work for both. So company is always preferring two in one uh, if you have two qualities uh, if they have two qualities in one person so definitely they will prefer for that so far i know uh, this is how the company expects Maybe yeah and wrong. in fact um many of the students that come out of uh, computer sciences it engineering or any kind of science background um, they often have very specialized skills and knowledge but they do not quite have that business um, background um, in order to move up in the company. And so even in Canada, the domestic Canadian students, once they become a professional in one area, they oftentimes go back to school to learn about business so that they can um, you know, expand their skills and move up. So having that already in your hand before you start working in Canada is not a bad thing at all. If anything, it, it's, um, it allows you more time to work and focus on your work exactly we'll take another uh, question of uh, from salman hamid he's asking what is the requirement for ielts to get admission in pgd courses mm -hmm. so what is the ielts requirement junko okay uh, so 
Mm -hmm. So right now we have the um, the same requirements as undergraduate requirement um, because I understand that we understand that many students um, they're having a bit of an access issue um, for English assessment right because of COVID nineteen. Um, so IELTS requirement is six point zero overall score with no band or no section less than 5.5. So that's a requirement. Um, however, if you're not able to access the um, online IELTS indicator or face-to-face -face IELTS, then we also accept Duolingo English test as an alternative. And the requirement is 105 for the score. Okay, so, so, so for uh, your PDD program or postgraduate certificate program, you are also accepting six overall no band less than 5.5. Yes, yes, we are. Okay, okay so dear Salman, uh, the IELTS requirement is uh, six, six overall no band less than 5.5, but if you don't have IELTS, but if you cannot sit for IELTS, you can go for Duolingo, which is can which can be given from your home itself online. And if you have 105 in Duolingo, then you can easily apply to North Island College PG program. So definitely now we'll talk about your courses, both in undergrad and postgrad. Just a quick um, view of uh, your programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you already talked a little bit about the university transfer program. Um, so yes. those would have, um, basically, if you're thinking about going into four-year university program, we can start you off in any of the areas, including sciences and engineering um, and humanities. So um, you don't have to really worry about that. Um, in other program areas, we have business, we have tourism and hospitality. Um, and for business and tourism hospitality, we have both undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And then the rest of the programs are undergraduate programs um, in fine art, uh, digital design and development, early childhood education, um, and uh, human services, uh, which means basically social work. Um, and um, the final area is trades and technical. So trades and technical, um, if you're a more hands-on person and want to get that hands-on skills, um, we have programs in um, robotics. Um, so you're working with sort of automated machines that you might see in car assembly line. You have to learn to program, you have to learn to do electrical, you have to be able to build the, the hardware of that. Um, and it's a really uh, high in demand um, area to go into. And, um, and the other um, area is aircraft maintenance. So that's the, the quick overview of it. Um, but one thing I would like to also mention is that in business program, if you're thinking about undergraduate program, we actually offer a full four year degree program. So some of the students will stay with us. Some of the students will go to other universities and that's totally up to you. And our advisors are always working with students to make sure that each student has the right courses to go into the university that they want to go into or to stay with NIC and go into a bachelor's program. Okay, so uh, you only have postgraduate courses in business faculty, right? Yeah, um, business. And then um, we do have the um, advanced diploma in tourism and hospitality. Tourism. Yeah. Tourism hospitality. So what will be the admission uh, requirement for your all program uh, for undergrad and postgrad? And what will be the average IELTS requirement for all these programs? Okay, so the um, IELTS requirement I sort of mentioned, but all of the programs have the same requirements of IELTS 6.0 overall with no band less than 5.5. Unfortunately, if your band score is lower than 5.5, then we won't be able to accept you in the program. Um, for um, other admission requirements, um, if you are going into undergraduate program, to be honest, we can take you as long as you have completed your high school graduation. So for example, you might have maybe one you know, biology course completed at uh, grade 12 or A, A level, um, but you don't have other courses like chemistry and physics and you're thinking that maybe you want to go into a science degree program or even engineering degree program, then you can come into our Associate of Arts program. And then we can provide you with both the upgrading high school courses in those subjects that you didn't complete and also the, um, the um, university level courses. So we can prep you that way. Um, or if you do not quite have the percentage in the courses required, say your physics course 
um, you didn't do very well. Then you can repeat your grade 12 um, physics. And it's a really good idea to do that because then you will have a very solid foundation in Canadian education system to go further into your science or engineering degree program. When it comes to business and tourism program, um, we do have a math requirement and we do assess students uh, to make sure that um, students have uh, Canadian grade 11 um, equivalent um, math uh, with a minimum of 65%. Now, if you don't have that, that's okay. We still provide you with a math placement assessment. And so you can take the math placement test. If you do pass, then you can go straight into the business or tourism program. If you do not pass, then we can still take you into the um, business related courses plus the math upgrading so that you will be ready to take the upper level business courses. <clears throat> and then you basically shift from one program to another. Um, for post degree diploma program though, you have to have the completion of a bachelor's degree program. It can be any bachelor's program. It does not have to be a business background. And we require the same um, math requirement as business programs. Um, so if you have the grade 11 math, that's great. If you have any other um, higher level math courses from a university degree, we can look at that for equivalency. The only thing is that we do offer math placement tests, but if you do not pass the math placement test, we won't be able to take you into our um, uh, post-degree diploma or advanced diploma program in business and tourism and hospitality. Do I have some specific uh, question on that? Like, uh, like uh, as you said that you are also offering mm -hmm. bachelor courses. Is it, is it on? Is it in BBA? I mean, is it in business program or? Yes. What are the yes. Programs? four years bachelor of business. Yes, that's right. And you can choose to do general management and marketing or accounting. Um, okay. We have a very good accounting program. So if any students are interested in going into accounting or one day becoming a certified professional accountant in Canada, um, which actually is a really lucrative and very good opportunity employment wise for students, um, then we have both the undergraduate program and post degree diploma program for that. Okay, I think you also have post degree Diploma in accounting, right? You have yes. that. Kind of, so, so how many years of the program? Two years? Um, two years for post-degree diploma in um, pre-professional accounting. That's the proper name for it. Um, and that uh, provides you with all the undergraduate courses and some of the extra courses required in order for you to get into, uh, we call it CPA PEP. Yeah, CPA so basically a, a professional um, training program. Um, okay. and, and what about the duration of your global business management? Yeah, it's two the years? same two-year program. Two and I would like to mention now that um, in post-degree diploma program, internship is a requirement. And so okay. usually between the first year and the second year, students will go out into the industry and um, work full-time or part-time depending on their um, assignment. Um, and so that they can get extra work experience in the industry. And that's really a crucial part of your education because if you're thinking about staying afterwards and working in Canada, having that industry related work experience is the key to getting a, a good and um, stable employment for the future. Do you have any uh, co-op in your diploma courses? Yes, we do. So with the exception of Associate of Arts and Sciences programs, which are at university transfer programs, all of them have either co-op, internship, practicum, or if they do not list them, um, we still have the work components already integrated into the curriculum. So by the time students complete a diploma program in undergraduate, um, level, then they already have the job related skills needed in order to start working. Exactly. Now we need to talk about very important topics about the fee structure of NIC, which mm -hmm. is a very important part of the, our topics to today's live session. What I mean, what, what is your fee structure, tuition fees, and other things, and uh, how is the payment policy, uh, how they can pay the deposits in how many installments? Mm -hmm. And also, is there any scholarship? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will start with the, the total fees. 
Um, so, as you mentioned, the tuition fee is about um, just over $13,000, but we also uh, make sure that we inform students of other fees uh, that are involved, such as student service fees, um, some lab fees, or even medical fees, because you have to pay into our provincial medical plan. So, with all of that included, it comes to be about $17,000 to $19,000, depending on programs. Obviously, if you take technical training, then the fees are slightly higher um, because of equipment needs. But if you're looking at academic program, then um, it's about $17,000 for the whole year. And that's, for, um, that's under the assumption that you will take five courses in each of the semesters. Now, the students are only required to pay what they take. Um, so basically, if you take three courses instead of five courses in one semester, they do not have to pay uh, five course fees. They will only pay for three course fees. Now, when it comes to the tuition payment um, period, before you come to NIC and before you apply for the study permit, you will have to pay one term worth of tuition fee and um, some related fees. So that comes to be about um, about $8,000 or so that you will have to pay as a tuition deposit. And then um, once you get approved for study permit and then come to Canada and start studying for the first semester, partway through the first semester, you will then pay for the second semester's fee, which is the other half of the, the whole annual fee. Um, and so you will be paying um, each semester as you go along and as based on the, um, the registration depending on how many courses so so i mean uh, so far i know that your uh, tuition fee was uh, thirteen thousand, no before mm -hmm. it, 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 had, it, it has been increased now seven thousand um, no, the tuition itself is just over thirteen thousand dollars, but because yeah. we calculate the provincial medical fees, and, and, and yeah, and yeah, everything fees. else, and also textbook fees um, yeah. as an estimate. Yeah, that's why. Is there any is there any scholarship for international students? Yes. So we have for both postgraduate programs and undergraduate programs, so we have a couple of entrance awards. One is um, based on your English proficiency and your scores. And you can get anywhere between $500 and about $1,500 put towards the uh, first term of the tuition fees. And the other entrance award is a regional award. And students from Bangladesh definitely qualifies for that. And that's anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000 on top of um, English proficiency award. And again, that can be put towards the first term or second term tuition fee. Now, um, okay. once, once uh, students do start studying, then um, after the first uh, after the first semester, students can also apply for a continuing uh, continuing student award, which is uh, two thousand dollars per student, and that one is based on the student's GPA. So it means like uh, students can get five hundred to thousand uh, five hundred dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which is entrance scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. as, I, as you have said, uh, based on their CGP or IELTS score. But what is the uh, percentage they should have, or what should be the IELTS requirement to to be eligible for uh, entrance? Okay, so for IELTS, um, or um, we also have the uh, the score for Duolingo as well. Um, so I will start with the Duolingo just because it's easier. <laughs> um, so Duolingo, um, it's a $1,000 uh, flat um, for all of the awards. And um, if you have 125 or higher in Duolingo exam, you will be able to receive $1,000. And that's great because Duolingo exam itself is only about uh, 49 US dollars. So if you do score high, then that's fantastic. And, and one more thing that with uh, I mean, additional to that, they may get the uh, re regional scholarship. Mm -hmm, uh, that's that right. is, uh, Bangladesh is also under that regional scholarship. Mm -hmm. So in that case, one one thousand plus two thousand, so it's coming almost three thousand. Is it mm -hmm. like that? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. A, that's a good option. That's a good option. So the the, the fees is coming eleven thousand uh, Canadian dollar. Exactly. That's right. So um, now we talk about the application process, how it works for NIC. What is mm -hmm. the policy of your application process? How is the application fees 
and what should uh, what what will be the application uh, process for NIC? Okay, so application is um, done completely online, um, and uh, uh, there is an application portal called Education Planner. Um, now, application fee generally is one hundred dollars Canadian, but for students who are applying within um, before the end of June uh, through prominent consultant, students can qualify um, for application fee waiver. And so um, that's something that's nice about um, application. Okay, okay. So I mean, it, it is already waived for prominent. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And um, once you apply, and then you will be um, you will be most likely working with your um, with prominent consultant, and you will send in all of your documentation to NIC, and that includes a passport, co a copy of your picture page um, of the passport your transcripts and such. Now, if you are still in high school or you're finishing up a degree program and you do not quite have the final score, that's okay. You can send everything that you currently have with the assumption that you will be done with your graduation before you start your study at NIC. And we will make a decision based on your interim score or partial score at this point. And then you can submit your final results later on. Exactly. And then, that's very fantastic news because they can save hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and I know that some students might not necessarily have the English testing score um, just yet. And in that case, um, students can actually take that English testing even after they apply for the program. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, dear student, that's a very good uh, option uh, given by North Island College. You can. Uh, if you apply, there is no application fee at all. Uh, it was hundred dollar. Now you can apply without any application fees to prominent definitely, and you can submit all your documents to prominent. Prominent consultants uh, can uh, do your application on behalf of you. And one more thing that Junko said that even if you don't have IELTS or uh, Duolingo at this moment, you don't worry about that. You file your application, and after that you can submit your Duolingo X score after uh, some times of uh, when you get the score. But still, your application will be processed. That's how Junko said, right? Junko, yes. is it like that? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Junko, we are uh, just at the we are just at the end of the live session. So before uh, leaving our live session, we'll have few discussion. But before that, uh, we'll have a video of your orientation program of NIC. Let's okay. have the video. Thank you. I chose to come to North Island College when I checked online. I find that their programs is quite interesting. And more so, I learned that the area, the environment is very beautiful. That's why I came. One of the things I love is everybody comes together, whether it's faculty, administrations, or students. It's a sense of community, sense of place, sense of belonging here that you don't get at other universities. Orientation is, is extremely important because orientation gives you an opportunity to talk to a lot of people, meet them, rather than just meeting them in class. It gives you an opportunity to know your campus, to know your faculty and to know the staff. And it also lets you know that there are people to help you all the time. In four days, we provide you all information about your accommodation, your food, your banking, education books, everything. People are coming from different country and then the culture and even everything is different when they come for studies to Canada. So it's just a head start. It's like it's kind of amazing because we just met like three days ago or something and making a new group and being, getting close and playing sports together is kind of big. You meet people outside there, they're kind of really, really hospitable. They say hi to you, they want to know you. And it's a quite a new thing you're trying to learn from people and people trying to learn from you, so it's quite beautiful. When we have been working in groups and we were able to share some experiences from different countries, that was, that was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. 
I fell in love with uh, North Island College, the people here, and everyone is making me feel like I'm in home. Because I love it. <laughs> I homestay because I like to have students come to my house that are from another country so they can learn about our culture. I get to learn about their culture. I think the benefit for them to come to homestay is that they can feel safe in a home. She's always taking care of me and, and she's always helping me. The community is really, 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 really good because when I came here on the first day, everyone was saying hi, hello to everyone. You welcome everyone with your open heart, open mind, and I love that. With the help of Get Connected, it provides a platform for the domestic students and the international students to come together, sit together, celebrate together. So we have all kind of events that provide the social life for the students at North Island College. I like the diversity, the, the international feel. People are really friendly and the education system is really good because you're getting a Canadian experience along with the degree. Yes, uh, it was uh, such a video of International Students Orientation Day. So students are enjoying uh, and they are feeling comfort and uh, wow, the, the, I mean, the, the view of the beach, uh, the sea area, it's very fantastic with the hills. Uh, it's a fantastic view. So far I can yeah. see in the video and one more thing that uh, that's the, the students are saying that you are, it's not a uh, uh, for international degree, it's you, you are experiencing the Canadian system canadian uh, environment so which is very important uh, for you to uh, to grow up in canada and to be settled down in canada so junko uh, we are at the last stage of our live session so mm -hmm. do you have anything to say if i have missed anything to ask you or any anything you would like to tell to the viewers Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, what I wanted to say to students from Bangladesh is that in Canada, employment system is a little bit different from um, what you might see in Bangladesh. Um, generally speaking in Bangladesh, if I'm correct, um, your degree or your um, education is one of the most important things. But in Canada, the skills and your work experience is the most important thing um, in getting um, an employment um, together with your connection to the community and to the industry. And that's something that is not easy to gain in living in bigger cities and also competing with other, um, you know, thousands of other people who have the same experience and same education as you. Um, whereas uh, being in a slightly smaller city, that's much easier to get. And also the good reference, good work experience is something that's easier to get. Um, so that's something that I would like to mention. And the last thing is that um, I forgot to mention about our living expenses. Um, and uh, with uh, tr transportation, with food, rental and everything, generally speaking, um, living expenses about $400 cheaper on average per month. Um, in um, Comox Valley, Campbell River, and Port Alberni area. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you so much for your uh, wonderful time, Junko. And uh, I think uh, it was your first trip to Dhaka last time in Yes. Yes. So and I must say, how, I enjoyed it. Trip? How yeah, was it was trip? fantastic. Yeah, I actually okay. really enjoyed the. Um, a did lot did of you like time. Dhaka? Yes, and especially the uh, textile. Fabric was amazing in Dhaka. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so textile means you have uh, visited some uh, uh, dress shops, some yes. uh, dress showrooms. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So you have said that uh, the population of Kamox Valley is 75,000 people. And in Canada, how many people? Whole Canada? 35 million. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> 35 million. Do you know that how many in Dhaka? No, I have no idea. It's 20 million. Oh my goodness, that's kind of like uh, living in Tokyo, I guess. I, 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 I spent my younger years in Tokyo and uh, that was about exactly. the same. But... So, too much population in Dhaka as a very uh, overpopulated city, but uh, the Dhaka is always a, 
uh, you know the comfortable city for all of us because we now we are familiar with all this environment mm -hmm. and uh, now we are enjoying summer though we are staying in home actually definitely we are passing very hard time so many people are passing away mm -hmm. and uh, they are leaving us uh, to the another world and it's a very very we are feeling very upset to them and uh, we don't know that what will be happen in future and how many people will be losing uh, so let's hope for the best let's pray to god or allah and uh, let's uh, see how it happens and definitely we are passing very critical time at this moment and the whole world is facing this situation uh, so let's see how we can recover definitely there will be some good times very soon yes so definitely any, any 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 last thing you need to share to our yes viewers? yes definitely um i want to say that um we we like like you said we are in this whole COVID 19 situation together wherever you are and whatever the situation might be i must say that we are very fortunate in canada and especially british columbia and um i understand that especially thinking about studying overseas or moving overseas there will be many many concerns surrounding um the move and surrounding um the start period that kind of thing so um, I understand and um, we are really, um, we are very prepared to handle any of those kinds of inquiries and um, in fact for all the applicants and all the existing students, we are having a personal connection with every single one of them. We have um, a, a team of members, um, team members that are attached to every single applicant. So um, don't worry too much. If you do have any questions, you are more than welcome to, um, you know, not just to refer to permanent consultant and professional like yourself, Syed, but um, also we will be here to support um, in any way possible. And hopefully we will be in a place to be able to welcome everybody into, you know, um, not just Canada, but, you know, be able to travel across the world very soon. Exactly. So, dear viewers, thank you so much uh, for watching this live video. And Junko, uh, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful time uh, for last thank more you. Than one hour. We have uh, discussed all the things about North Thailand College and about about the, all the matters regarding courses, opportunities over there. So, thank you so much. We'll be in touch definitely. And uh, you already have told students about the opportunities, about the course fees. Uh, about the scholarship, about the application fee, whatever, everything we have said. And still, I think your application is still open for September 2020. Yes. yes. So, yes. Yeah, so, dear viewers, you just go for that. And still, if you have any question, just let us know. We promise consultant will help you out. So, thank you so much once again for watching this live thank video. You. You, can, you can also uh, uh, get this video also in our YouTube channel as well. And take care, stay in home, stay safe. And uh, good night for this time and we'll see and again you uh, in another live session so junko please be here uh, be on uh, i mean not live i mean in studio i'll get back to you okay just, just be here okay so Great. dear everyone thank you so much good night and see you again